Hey, it's Kathy. So recently a friend and I were talking about when is the best time to invest in a trend? What sparked the discussion was my friend asking me how was I liking my Prada Mom and Lift boots a year later? Knowing that there were a ton of Gunky Combat boots at the time, she wanted to know if I felt like I made a good decision purchasing these or if maybe I should purchase another pair or if I just would have should have got a, a cheap pair from Zara. In this video, I'm gonna answer all of those questions. Let's get started. If you're into fashion like myself and you also indulge in trends, the question of when to invest in a trend always comes up. I tend to usually go cheap with the trend and then if I like it, I invest. But there are times where I, I know that this trend is gonna work for my wardrobe, so I will invest in it if I think the piece is worth it. About these Prada Monolith boots. So around the beginning of 2020, the chunky combat boot trend jumped off. Chunky combat boots were so in, and I was really, really interested in the trend. When I think about investing in a trend, I usually go for pieces that are classics. Combat boots originated in the military, and like if we fast forward to the 80s, I think the punk rock scene and the goth scene really kind of made the main mainstream. I remember being a kid in high school and people just loved the Doc Martin boots. So now fast forward to 2022. I feel like the chunky boot trend started before the pandemic. I remember brands like Bottega Veneta and Prada coming out with their own version of the chunky boot. At the time I liked the lug boot, I also liked the very high Prada monolith boot, the one that goes like up to your calf. I knew a classic combat boot would be a good fit to my wardrobe, but I wasn't sure. None of them I was willing to pull the trigger on. At that time I decided I was going to get some Doc Martens. I went to, I think I went to Bloomingdale's once. Bloomingdale's didn't have a big Big selection of them so I ended up going to the Doc Martens store to kind of look at all the different Doc Martens that are available for me to try on. I tried on a bunch of them and none of them gave me that loving feeling. First time I saw these ankle product monolith boots were at Nordstrom probably towards the end of the summer like September 2020. I was in love. I was in love until I saw the price. They were like $1,200 at the time. Checking the Prada website, they are now $1,580. I think when I purchased my Prada monolith boots, they were like $1,350. These boots have gone up almost $400 since they launched a year and a half ago. There were a couple of luxury boots that I considered before I bought these. I considered buying the high Prada monolith boots. I remember seeing them all over Instagram and thinking like, oh my gosh, these boots are a statement. The first person I think I saw wearing them was probably Hyla Lux and I love them. When I saw them initially, I knew that they were so distinctive that once the trend was over, it, they were gonna look very dated. I see very few people who own them rocking them now. I also thought about buying the Bottega Veneta lug boots. They're super cute. I know a bunch of people who love them. I just didn't feel that way about them. In my mind, the, the, the Bottega Veneta lug boots were more of a, like a Chelsea boot versus a traditional combat boot. To me, a combat boot is a boot that laces up. I thought that they had very good staying power. I also started liking the tire boot. The Bottega Veneta tire boot is also still another pull-on Chelsea boot. I was really determined to buy a lace-up combat boot. I ended up buying these like on Black Friday of 2020. I've been very, very happy with them. I will say we've been in a panoramic. We've been in a whole pan-seared salmon, so I haven't been going out a ton of places. I have worn these, but I have not worn these as much as I would have liked to. Truth be told, most of my shoes are looking at me like, why am I here? It's nobody's fault, but the Rona. So buying these boots to me was a, a no brainer. I knew that a combat boot was a classic style for me. I knew that either, either if I was gonna spend $20 or I was gonna spend $1,000, it was gonna be a style that I was gonna wear over and over. Another reason that I went with these, they look like a combat boot. If these didn't have the chunky sole, they would just be a traditional combat boot. The chunky sole is the only thing that really tips you off to the fact that these are a trend from 2020 and 2021. So pricing wise, I wish I would have bought these boots when they first came out, when they were like under $1,200. I paid $1,350. They're now $15.80. I'm glad I don't have to pay that. I know for a long time they were sold out. I feel like a lot of people bought these and I think in another year or so, they're gonna be selling on the pre-love market. Not everybody's gonna wear them. They are a very specific combat boot. If you don't wanna pay that price and you're willing to get a pre-loved pair, I think you'll be fine. These boots are very, very durable, so you'll be okay. Leave me a boot emoji in the comments if you got this far. The main reason I bought these boots was for the styling. I felt like I had a bunch of ankle boots and the ankle boots were really nice. They had a nice little heel, but I needed something a little bit more substantial, a little bit more on the masculine rugged side. 
and these boots fit the bill. I like wearing cute jogging suits in the winter. And so I usually wear them with tennis shoes, but you know, when it gets really, really cold or snowy in Chicago, it's nice to have a nice boot. So these are perfect in that situation. In addition, I like wearing dresses. I'll wear them with some tights and usually I will if I'm going out, I'll wear them with a nice ankle boot. The dresses are usually like either a midi length or a maxi. I do have snow boots, but there are times when I don't, I wanna be cute. I don't wanna wear my snow boots. I want something that's substantial, that's rugged. It's not gonna get messed up like a high heel boot. In that situation, the combat boots are perfect. Of course, combat boots and jeans are a no brainer. You can wear them all the time. I own a lot of denim, but I will confess, I've only worn two pair of jeans pretty much this whole year. I have these mango straight legs, some Zara skinnies. Those are the only jeans I've been wearing all 2021. 2022, I don't think I've worn jeans. I have a whole entire video of how I style these boots in the spring. I will link it. In the spring, I will definitely wear these with like cutoffs and maybe some tights. It's too cold for that in the winter time, there is so much that you can do with these boots. So in most Bottega boots, I wear like a 39, which is essentially a US women's nine. That is my usual size in like heels and other things. So with these boots, I feel like they're a little narrow. So I ended up sizing up to a 39 and a half. They fit fine. One of my feet is normal and one of my feet is a little wide. So I felt like that gives me the extra space that I need where I don't have a lot of rubbing. I will say if you have a really, really wide foot, the toe bed of this shoe is not roomy and spacious. It's not super narrow. There's not a ton of room. I'm very happy with the decision to purchase. The quality is, I've probably worn them 10 times, which is not a lot in the of a year, but I feel like most of my shoes have only been worn 10 times out of the house. I love the fact that they look like a regular combat boot, but they're so unique. They're gorgeous. They're substantial. Some people may not like the fact that they're substantial. I was at the product store this Black Friday and they had like a new pair that were very lightweight. Ugh, I didn't like them. For me, I'm like, if you're getting a combat boot and they're like light as a feather, I just feel like it kind of like, why? Like why? I was probably tired of the pouches two to three months in. So I'm so glad that they, they were removable. Truthfully, if the pouches were not removable, I probably would not have purchased them because I knew wearing it with the pouches was gonna be a temporary thing. The pouches are super cute. I just don't like them on the boots anymore. It's just a little bit too trendy. The pouch is like a little pendant. Maybe one day I can wear it around my neck. I feel like I can do something. I have two of these pouches. Maybe I'll put on a belt or something. I don't know. Another thing I like about these boots is that they're a combination of nylon and leather. So usually boots like this are all leather and they tend to crease a lot. You know, this is the number one place you're gonna see creasing. The creasing for some people can be very unsightly. I don't mind it, but with these boots being a hybrid of nylon and leather, I'm gonna get less creasing. So I feel like they're gonna look better long-term. Cause I've seen some people with some Doc Martens, they look like Sharpays. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. I think Prada made a smart decision by mixing their nylon and the leather. I'm one of those people, I tend to, I guess, over pronate, meaning I walk on the outside of my shoes. So this back portion of my shoe tends to wear out. When I bought the shoe, I did have some concerns about that wearing out because this chunky sole, what cobbler is gonna resole these shoes? The product essay told me, oh, don't worry about it. The It's so thick, it's not gonna wear down. Uh. That is true, but it's very faint, but I do see a little bit of wearing down. And what I'm probably gonna do is have my cobbler put some taps, a piece of metal there so it doesn't wear down. If you look at my other shoes, you will see that they're a little bit worn down, which is fine for a $200 pair of shoes, but for a $1,300 pair of shoes that I don't think anybody's gonna be able to resole, I don't want that, so I'm gonna add the taps. So another thing I love about these boots is really the girls that know, know. Even though they are Prada, most people, if they see me walking down the street, just think I have some nice combat boots on. Actually, maybe not even nice, they just think I have some combat boots. I love the fact that they are stealth. Without the pouches, they are not flashy. They're definitely luxurious on my feet. And I love luxury that I can actually experience. I've seen some dupes, nope. When I waddle my little self past somebody with some Prada monolith boot dupes, I'm the Bentley, they're the 300M. If I were to give these boots an overall rating, I would probably give them a nine out of 10. I almost wish that they were a tad bit more roomier in the toes. With a boot like this, you sometimes wanna wear a thicker sock. And maybe I think if you have a skinny foot, you probably can wear a super thick sock. But for those girls like me who have a normal to slightly wide foot, like I can't, I, can. I have to wear just like a regular sock. Some people are gonna complain about it being heavy. I don't mind the heaviness. I feel like the weight makes it feel substantial to me. And that's part of luxury. There is a version that is super lightweight. So I'm assuming some people did complain, but the weight I don't mind, it's a combat boot. If you buy any other combat boot, they're gonna be substantial, they're gonna be heavy. 
it is what it is. See, another drawback is taking these shoes on and off. Like, no. Once I have these shoes on, I'm keeping these shoes on until I come back home and take them off for the rest of the day. If you want to go shopping for, for jeans, do not take these Prada Monolith boots because taking these on and off, it's not hard, but it's, it's not like slipping off a heel. It takes a little bit of work. These are all complaints that are par for the course with a boot, especially a combat boot. So I don't think I'm saying anything out of the ordinary. Let me know in the comments if you have any more questions about the Prada Monolith boots. So that was my thought process about when to invest in boots slash a mini review of the Prada Monolith boot. Let me know in the comments if you have any further questions. I, I feel like I answered most of the common questions. I highly recommend the boot. They are not for everybody, but if you're looking for a luxurious combat boot and you're willing to either pay the money or you can find them pre-loved, I say go for it. Let me know if you're looking for more ways on how to style this boot. I'm going to leave my video on how to style Prada Monolith boots for the spring right here. All right, see you next time. Bye.